Welcome to part two of the evolution of civilization, the cosmos and our elemental past. How exciting it is to be alive at a moment when we know the history of our world and the universe. At no other point in all of human history has this been known. It's possible that we're the first conscious beings in the entire history of the universe, and thus the first to know it so intimately. The history of the cosmos is the greatest story ever told. To be alive in the present moment is a true miracle, a time when we can tell our story with amazing precision, which can be verified. Until now, we've relied on other stories going back thousands of years. Sometimes they more accurately reflected reality than others, but regardless, the stories about our universe were always an important part of life. They helped inform who we would become. Our modern story, which is still being written, has ended up being so much different than we imagined so much grander than we could imagine. The story of our universe is our story, yours and mine. It's the story of where we came from, why we're here right now. This is our modern day creation story. Just as cultures all over the world and throughout time have told their stories of creation, so we tell ours. Although this story has been told many times, from short histories to very long ones, from books to films, it's always worth retelling it in new ways. This story seeks to capture the miracle of existence rather than just a lecture, to experience awe for the evolution of our universe, of us. However, this story and the ones before and after, of course, will never be the final story. Even as much as we know, we still don't know close to everything about the cosmos. We still don't know enough about the four forces that form the framework of everything. We invented the ideas of dark energy and dark matter because they were predicted by our calculations, but we still don't know enough about them. We invented supersymmetry and the multiverse theory and string theory, but can barely describe what they are. But think about where we've just come from. We only recently learned about the Big Bang, about space-time, about black holes. Quite frankly, we just discovered each other across the continents 500 years ago. Let's begin with the Big Bang. What is the cosmos? What is existence? What we can see and touch and feel, and hear and smell, is only a fraction of what really exists that makes up the cosmos. Therefore, it's difficult to even define the cosmos in existence. It's difficult to know exactly how much of a fraction we know because there's still so much that we don't know. What existed before the Big Bang? And what did the Big Bang expand into? The Big Bang wasn't an event like any other. It literally created existence while it came into being. It created both space and time. So before the Big Bang, there was no such thing as space and time, at least as we currently understand it. And as it expanded, it created even more space and time, and it's still expanding. So out of infinity, the universe came into being. The miracle of all miracles, existence was born. The Big Bang is simply the name we give to a spectacular event that allowed for everything that we know. If we take all the evidence for this event and run it backwards as far as we can, it points to a massive explosion of energy, 
that in its wake created the four forces, space, time, and matter. Matter first formed as subatomic particles like quarks, then as electrons and protons and neutrons, and finally atoms came into being. Space is actually filled with all sorts of stuff. Even after you get rid of all the atoms, it's better described as a web or a network of forces. The forces of gravity, of electromagnetism, the strong and the weak, weak nuclear forces. Gravity can be thought of as the shape of space, like lines of force bending and stretching all around all of matter. Electromagnetism is the most familiar force to us. It is the spectrum of waves from very short to very long lengths that produces frequencies. It was discovered by Michael Faraday when he showed that electricity was related to magnetism. And in turn, he created the first motor. In addition to being responsible for the essential phenomena of electricity and magnetism, it includes the light itself and all the colors, radiation, the rays, radio waves, and microwaves. What Einstein discovered is that not only are they related, but electricity actually turns into magnetism and vice versa. And they do this at a particular speed, the speed of light, about 700 million miles per hour. The last of the four forces are the strong and weak nuclear forces, which hold atoms together, and they also cause their decay. The universe is about 14 billion years old, a number so big that we can barely even fathom what that means. First came the explosion, and as space expanded, it began to cool down, causing all sorts of new reactions among the early matter and forces. That was the moment when subatomic particles came into being and eventually gave rise to the first atoms, what we call hydrogen. For a long time, the only real matter in the universe was hydrogen. As the universe continued to expand, it cooled even further. It began to create new configurations of atoms, this time known as helium, the second atom. At this stage, there was three quarters hydrogen and one quarter helium. For a long time, there were only two types of atoms, swirling in clouds of gas, a bunch of energy, and the four forces. Gravity was the major mover at this point. It pushed and pulled the atoms around, causing large clouds of atoms to form. This created vast differences in the universe, in the fabric. Most was a void, but the rest were pockets of large gas clouds made of helium and hydrogen. This also caused the energy to coalesce in some places and not in others. All as a result of the initial explosion, creating tiny differences in space-time, and these ripples were magnified once gravity took hold. As the clouds of atoms condensed, they got hotter, and the hydrogen and helium atoms began to fuse, thus releasing tremendous amounts of energy. And here we have our first stars. A truly remarkable event in all of time. Before then, there was never light. We also get energy and heat. Stars are the first motors of the universe. At this point, the universe is now around 200 million years old. Billions of stars are created, which now begin to be affected by gravity themselves, just as the glass clouds were. Eventually, galaxies formed from many nearby stars coalescing. In turn, nearby galaxies formed into even bigger groups, and they tended to collect together and form strands in the universe. The original stars eventually ran out of fuel, causing gravity to take over again. 
Gravity caused the remaining bits of stars to explode, releasing tremendous amounts of energy not seen since the Big Bang. Some of the stars were bigger than others, and when they exploded, they released different amounts of energy. The heat created by the large collapsing stars created the first new group of atoms. We call them carbon, nitrogen, silicon, iron and oxygen. Later the exploding stars caused the creation of even more groups of atoms. So every element in you and around you, everything that you can see, everything that you can touch and feel and smell, all of these were created in the explosion of a star. The most powerful explosions turned into neutron stars and also black holes. This process went on for a couple of billion years. After about nine billion years of star formation and death, planets formed around one of these stars. We know this star as our sun, and it's the reason why we have our solar system and the earth that we are standing on right now. About five billion years ago, our sun formed after the explosion of a nearby star. Because the region of space that we inhabit had tremendous amounts of diverse elements, our sun lit up and the nebula of gas and dust around it was able to form into large balls of gases and smaller balls of dense materials, our planets. The elements combined to form larger and larger bodies, which then reacted to each other with untold number of collisions, ending in one body taking up space in each of the orbits. The ones closest to the sun, like the Earth, are dense and small compared to the ones that are much bigger, made of gases, like Jupiter. This is why we are here right now why there's this voice and you listening because this happened a truly miraculous story and this is our new origin story the scientific method tends to break up all of phenomena into its component parts and search for the underlying mechanics but that doesn't have to take away from the wonder and beauty that informs our new story in fact, it makes it so much more remarkable because we're coming closer and closer to understanding the true workings of the universe and the processes that unfolded and led to us, to life, to evolution, to our species, our civilization, to us right now. This new origin story with its depth and its breadth is a first for mankind. And one can never spend too much time marveling at it in awe.